During the 17th and 18th centuries, the British established a group of colonies along the eastern coast of what is now the United States. These colonies were referred to as the 13 Colonies or Colonial America. As time passed, the colonies expanded and extended along the Atlantic coast. By the time the American Revolution occurred in 1775 to 81, the number of colonies had reached 13. These colonies eventually evolved into states, with additional territories for the West. However, prior to the Declaration of Independence, what characterized life in colonial America? What was life in colonial America like for the average person and those in a higher social position? We'll explore the colonists' lives throughout the rest of this video. Welcome to History Insight. Please drop a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video as it really heals me out. The prospect of a new beginning, without the religious persecution and with numerous economic prospects, attracted people to migrate to the American colonies. However, despite the hope for a better life, colonial America had its share of struggles and hardships. The challenges were significant, and the life of many of those who moved to the colonies was short and full of difficulties. The European perspective on the American colonies was one of great potential. The colonies were seen as a new source of power, resources, and hope for the continent's burgeoning population. However, the reality of colonial America was far from ideal. The colonies were largely uncharted territories, and establishing organized towns and cities was a monumental task. Resources, as well as goods needed to sustain and develop the colonies, had to be transported from Europe. Early colonists also faced the threat of Native American attacks, as they had displaced some of the tribes that had lived on the land for generations. In addition to these challenges, colonists faced dangers from within their own communities. Thieves and rebellious enslaved people were a constant threat, and even some town residents harbored ill intentions towards their fellow colonists. Despite these challenges, the people of the colonies worked hard and did their best to build a life for themselves. However, life in the colonies was far from easy for anyone, except those who belonged to the upper class. In colonial America, the upper class enjoyed a significant advantage over the average colonist. They had access to more resources, protection, and land. They also had the luxury of relying on servants and enslaved people to do the manual labor for them, allowing them to work less and accumulate wealth more efficiently. In contrast, lower-class colonists had to work tirelessly from dawn to dusk to provide for their families. They were forced to survive by living off the land and often struggled to produce enough food to sustain themselves and earn a living. Even as the colonies began to thrive, uncertainty still loomed over the daily lives of American colonists. In addition to the threat of attacks from native people, religious beliefs played a significant role in shaping colonists' fears. Many believed that their lives were constantly in danger from supernatural threats and used the devil as a scapegoat for natural disasters, diseases, food shortages, and other issues that arose. Surviving in the colonies was also challenging due to the numerous natural hazards, such as poisonous plants, vicious animals, and even simple household dangers. Something as seemingly mundane as cooking a meal could be dangerous, as hot pans and pots had the potential to catch fire. Homes lit by candles posed a significant threat, with the risk of entire towns and homes being burned to the ground. Despite the many difficulties associated with life in colonial America, many people remained undeterred in their desire to move to the colonies. While some, such as prisoners, orphans, and persecuted Protestants, were compelled to make the journey across the ocean, many others believed that their prospects would be improved in the New World. In England, a rigid social hierarchy prevented most people from moving between social classes and limited their opportunities to the circumstances into which they were born. However, life in the colonies was vastly different. People were less concerned with social class, and there was an opportunity for individuals to improve their circumstances. Even servants and enslaved people had a chance to advance socially and become landowners if they managed to survive the challenges of life in the colonies. Despite the hardships, the promise of a new life in the colonies was appealing to many, 
and a burgeoning middle class was beginning to emerge. This class included landowners, business owners, and artisans, among others. In the American colonies, one's social class was less important than one's wealth. Men who were able to generate a profit from their farms or start a business had the opportunity to move up from lower to middle or even upper class status. Women could also elevate their social standing by marrying above their station. In the colonies, a good family background was not always necessary to achieve success, as long as an individual possessed intelligence and the necessary resources. These factors attracted tens of thousands of people to the colonies in the mid-17th century, with even more drawn to the New World by tales of the American dream. The first colony was established in Jamestown in 1607, with the Plymouth Colony and the Massachusetts Bay Colony following soon after. As more colonies were established, the British settled almost the entire eastern coast by 1763. The colonies were divided into three regions, the New England colonies, the Middle colonies, and the Southern colonies. Daily life in each region was slightly different due to factors such as climate, soil conditions, and the types of danger that colonists faced. Despite these differences, the basic religious beliefs and attitudes of the colonists were generally uniform, and the lifestyles of most colonists were similar, unless they belonged to the upper class. In the American colonies, the economy was centered around farming and commerce, with colonists also producing handmade goods for local sale and trade along the eastern coast. However, farming was the primary occupation for the vast majority of colonists, with approximately 9 out of 10 people working as farmers. Most colonists worked on small family farms, which were self-sustaining and provided everything necessary for survival. The food, drink, and clothing of the average colonist all came from their farms. However, creating farms required clearing land of trees with basic tools such as axes and saws. Those in the lower class had to build their homes themselves without assistance, using the timber they had cut down. Typically, houses in the colonial American countryside were one room and fully open, providing no privacy for families living together. Colonial American homes were sparsely furnished, with beds, kitchens, and fireplaces all located in a single room. A fire served as the only source of heat and the only means of cooking food, making the collection of firewood and timber a crucial part of daily life. Families rose early in the morning and worked until sunset to keep up with these demands. They tended to crops, fed animals, cut wood, made clothes, and crafted a wide range of home goods by hand, including soap, candles, and furniture. Life on colonial farms was simple, but it was also hard and demanding. Despite this, it was also predictable and consistent. Religion was a cornerstone of colonial life in the countryside, with weekly Sunday morning church services lasting up to five hours. In contrast to life in the countryside, city life in colonial America was quite different. Although most people still lived on farms, by 1750, approximately 1 in 20 colonists lived in the city. City life was more dynamic and diverse, with colonial cities serving as melting pots of cultures and ideas. Port cities in particular were vibrant centers of trade, with ships bringing in a range of luxury items and supplies, including books, carpets, jewelry, paintings, and other exciting goods. In addition, news from England and Europe arrived via the cities, making them hubs of communication and information. Life in the cities was livelier, with more marketplaces, taverns, and shops to explore. Colonial cities offered many markets near the docks, selling basic necessities, such as milk, bread, dairy, and meat. Drinks were sold at local taverns, which also served as gathering places for locals to socialize and gossip. Additionally, there were many novelty shops for people to explore, along with stores owned by blacksmiths, clockmakers, tailors, and barbers. Unlike in the countryside, it was possible for city dwellers to purchase a range of goods for their homes and have clothes custom-made, although these luxuries were primarily available to the better off. However, a growing middle class of artisans and landowners, many of whom had started out poor but built their wealth, were also emerging. While cities were exciting, they had their drawbacks. 
Living conditions were cramped, with homes situated close together, and sanitation was not a priority, resulting in a pervasive odor from rotting garbage and the open sewer system. There was also a significant population of poor people in the cities. Nevertheless, the availability of jobs was more diverse than in the countryside, with opportunities to learn trades, start businesses, and work at the docks. And that concludes our overview of life in colonial America. We hope you enjoyed learning about the challenges and opportunities faced by the colonists, both in the countryside and in the city. If you found this video informative, please consider liking, subscribing, and commenting below with any questions or feedback. Thank you for watching.